Kelly from the Energy Boutique with your energy and ascension forecast for Sunday, March 6th to Saturday, March 12th. So last week we did bridge the gap between February and March and that shift was very palpable. We definitely felt the energy just intensify, especially seeing how we entered into March with a new moon in Pisces. Very, very heavy energy, very dark, very negative narratives. We had a lot of memories, a lot of trauma kind of pop up from the past. It was a very heavy energy energy to navigate. And of course, that always happens when we have a magical, magical energy portal to manifest in. And that's exactly what the new moon in Pisces was all about. Those darker force energies definitely came at us trying to prevent us from aligning with our vision with our dream in order to actually bring that dream and vision to life in a very short amount of time. Many of us faced our shadow selves, our darkest parts, and for the most part, were scared right to our very core. And that, of course, acted as a catalyst in order for a huge realization, a huge transformation to take place within us. We had Venus conjunct Pluto for the third time since December. Of course, Venus being the goddess of love and beauty and worth and value and bumping into Pluto, the god of the underworld really illuminated for us all of the realizations that we've been struggling with since December when she moved into Capricorn, when she went into a retrograde, when she had to face her darkest parts of herself. And of course, this last conjunction definitely empowered her to have some of these realizations pop back up not to keep us down, not to keep us in the darkness, but of course, to inspire us to make the changes that we know are absolutely necessary within ourselves, putting ourselves first, putting ourselves in a situation to stand in our power to stand in our control, especially where relationships are concerned. Gone are the days where we are going to dim our light for other people to shine brighter. We are the stars of our own story. And many of us have been basically being the supporting role uh, to people in our lives for far too long. So we definitely had an energy shift with that. Venus cleared her shadow period just a day after this meetup with Pluto. And of course, Venus and Mars and Pluto had a little recap as Venus and Mars, of course, finished up their time in Capricorn. We only have about a day left of them in Capricorn energy, still walking hand in hand, trying to reset the masculine and feminine energies within us. We had the sun conjunct Jupiter. This is an annual meetup. This is something that happens once a year that really restores our faith, renews our spirit, gives us a new determination, a new willpower to see the bigger picture, to be positive, to be optimistic. And of course, that came right after we had the new moon in Pisces, which couldn't have came at a better time, helping us to dig ourselves out of that dark pit out of the darkness. Many of us felt that shift on many levels, but we are definitely starting to see the pieces come together and the light shine bright once again. So this week we have Venus and Mars, like I said, finishing up their time in Capricorn energy. They will be moving into Aquarius at a zero degree hand in hand, literally seven minutes within one another, and then they will conjunct Now, let me just say that this is a big deal. We're going to see this in our individual lives, but we're also going to see this on the global scale. This is a global awakening. The Aquarian energy does rule over the collective. It rules over us waking up. It rules over us seeing the global connections in a different way. Now, individually, we are going to feel a shift in a different uh, type of compartment let's say, because Venus is our heart space, our emotions, our relationship, our values, our worth, our money matters. And of course, Mars, he's the god of war. He just wants to take action and help us pursue the path that we know inside of us that our heart now desires. So we are going to feel that reset, that shift, that electrical charge definitely take over. 
This week, we also have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information and how it is that we communicate our inner realms to the outer world, move out of Aquarian energy and into Pisces. Now, let me just say, this is going to be a tough aspect, mostly because Mercury is in his fall, in his weakest position in Piscean energy. But here's the thing. We have a lot of beautiful things that can come out of Mercury being in Pisces, meaning new levels of intuition, new levels of understanding about ourselves, about what it is that's going on in the world, what it is we desire. We have new dreams coming in, new inspirations coming in, helping us to build that great grand vision that we've been working so hard to piece together and back with the correct emotion in order to actually manifest. We are going to feel all very, very foggy, though. We're going to add to this weight that we've been feeling in our physical bodies because of Pisces season. We will cover that a little bit more in the Ascension symptoms here in a bit. But just know that coming out of this Aquarian energy where everything's been buzzing in our mental plane, where we've been, you know, having too many windows open and the music is playing and we don't know which windows to close, that is definitely going to shift into more of a dreamy, creative type of state, which again, isn't a bad thing, but it is going to put a damper on our communication skills. We are also building to the first quarter moon in Gemini later on this week. And Gemini energy, of course, rules over the mental plane. Mercury rules over Gemini. The first quarter moon is always a crisis point, especially since the new moon in Pisces. This is a time of action. It's a time of change. It's a time of shifting. And because this is a Gemini energy, first of all, we're going to be very divided on what that action should be because Gemini really does create a little bit of a divide a little bit of an extreme polarized view between our heart and our head. But of course, that is the mission. That is the goal to find the middle ground. Gemini energy does suggest that there's going to be a lot of information for us to sort through in our practical mind and in our heart space before we're going to be able to be aligned to actually take that forward action, take that step forward. So before we jump into the ascension symptoms, I do have to cover just a couple of things. I want to give you guys a disclaimer. I'm sure you already noticed it. My energy is a little bit whack. My communication skills are a little bit whack. Why? Well, for those of you that have been with me, following me, supporting me, uh, you know, in the chat, listening to these forecasts, you will know that I entered into a little bit of a realm of trauma about a month ago where some dental issues came up. And of course, I explained my dental history and the trauma that came with that. Um, On Monday, I actually went in to the dentist for what I thought was just going to be, uh, you know, taking a good look around and getting a plan together. And we did know that we were going to try to fix and rebuild a couple of teeth that got damaged 12 years ago when I was being resuscitated and being brought back to life from my medical crisis. And although that gave me severe anxiety to just go to the dentist and deal with that, um, what I wasn't prepared for is a little bit of a minor surgery that took place on Monday. And let me just say, I had a full-blown panic attack, had to do yoga in the dental office. Good thing I was at a holistic dentist. They totally understand the mindful Uh, practice that one has to do in order to keep the body in alignment. I seen the trauma come out of my body. I literally laid in that chair shaking. Um, And we talked last week about the ascension symptoms about the trauma creeping up and us, you know, having tremors and shaking. And that is the energy, the old trapped energy coming out of our cellular memory, out of our physical body in order to be released. And boy, oh boy, did I see that on Monday. So I'm coming at you right now with uh, a bunch of stitches in my mouth with a very swollen face. Uh, I'm drugged on both holistic and, um, well, normal drugs. I am having a hard time talking. I am not in my office. I am laying on my couch. I apologize for my low energy. I apologize for, you know, not speaking correctly. I apologize for the difference in the audio in the background that you may experience. But guess what? I'm a warrior. We're all warriors. 
I can't preach to y'all to continue to show up if I'm not willing to show up myself. And so here I am. We we won't know how this is going to go until it's all over. Um, but let me just say that I appreciate those of you that continue to keep checking in with me, that send me your love, your support, that have been praying for me. Um, this is just uh, the introductory. This was the first phase. I still have a couple more little surgeries to go before I can correct this little issue. Um, but let me just tell you that I am not special. I do not get uh, a free pass when it comes to having to deal with trauma and deal with the energetic effects of trap trauma in your body. And let me just tell you that it was absolutely terrifying um, on Monday and now to have, you know, teeth removed and the roof of my mouth being wide open and stitched up and just not being able to talk correctly and see straight and eat properly has definitely thrown a wrench into what my week, what I thought my week was going to look like. Um, and for those of you that tune into me daily, you probably noticed the shift probably on Tuesday or Wednesday. I can't even remember what day it was. Um, but I, I still am trying to do my damnedest to make sure that I show up that we all are on the same page, that I deliver as much information as humanly possible about the energy and the cosmos and the lessons and the cycles and the seasons that we're all going through. And so I just want to apologize, first of all, that I'm not at my 100%, but also I want to thank you for the love, for the support, for the prayers. We are going to get through this. I'm going to get through this. I know I'm going to get through this, but Let's be human about it. It absolutely effing sucks. I hate it so much. Um, but it brings up a lot. And I want to kind of incorporate some of my personal experience with some of the ascension symptoms that are going on. Um, you know, this week has been dark. We had that new moon in Pisces that was just like, wow, very dark, very triggering, brought up a lot. And, um, you know, it, outside of the trauma that I've been carrying in my physical body due to past dental experiences, I feel like going in for a quote unquote, routine, what should have been a calm session, uh, leading to teeth extraction and minor surgery on the roof of my mouth, and my gums in order to um, kind of get the situation in my mouth under control. And for those of you who don't know, I have an autoimmune disease that is a central nervous system degeneration disease. And so all the nerves in my teeth now are being affected in my mouth. And um, they were really concerned because some, some nerves have been basically triggered to the point where they're dying. And of course, that leads to infection in the face. And I have other autoimmune diseases that um, support, you know, infection and not healing properly. And I have a heart condition because of it. So they had to use uh, different freezing methods and different techniques than they normally would on me just so that, you know, my, they didn't exasperate and, and agitate my existing health issues. Um, so, you know, these people are great. I'm definitely in good hands with them, but that doesn't, that doesn't calm uh, the trauma. It doesn't calm my experience any. Um, if anything, yeah, I'm super, super hella proud of myself for, for going through it and for doing what I could to calm myself in that situation. But at the end of the day, it kind of added more trauma on me because I was not expecting that. And then the aftermath of that, I mean, what a better way to figure out a new self-care routine other than, you know, being forced all the way in it. And not that I want to get too in depth in my past, but I definitely struggled years ago um, with prescription drugs, uh, painkillers specifically. And so to have to go through something that obviously causes a huge amount of pain that you need drugs for, it's also a very, very scary thing, especially in Pisces season where uh, we tend to want to numb where addictive personalities come out to play, where, you know, our darkness, our trauma, our pain, our suffering is just asking us 
to just do whatever we can to disassociate and just numb this reality. Um, it's a scary thing to know that you have to take drugs in order to get you through this healing chapter, but also recognize your struggle with drugs and to have to really exercise your self will and your self determination to keep your addictive behaviors in check and not let yourself go down that that dark hole again. I the last thing I want to do is open that wound. And so between uh, the, of course, regular drugs that they give you and my holistic drugs and, you know, vibrational healing and all of the tools and the resources that I've learned over the last decade plus of this healing journey. I've really been having to pull them all out of my tickle trunk and really try to be the example to say, you know, like, I have what it takes in order to get through this experience and to do it as healthy as possible. And it is not easy. It does not feel good. I feel very broken and damaged right now. Um, there's also a lot of identity crisis that comes up for me looking at yourself and seeing your face be swelled out and black eyes and missing teeth that I know that will get replaced eventually, but it just doesn't make you feel good. And uh, it's really hard. It's really hard to love yourself when you're going through this kind of stuff. But you know that loving yourself is the only way you're going to get through it. And like I said, I just I want to share with you guys and I want to be transparent about what it is that I'm going through, because the last thing I want to do is have any of you think that I sit here daily and weekly and preach from a position of, you know, just trying to tell you all how to do it and think that I'm not going through it myself. So I really hope that my experience and my rawness and my vulnerability and my weaknesses at least inspire you all to get up every day and to continue to push forward and to be your best self. And don't be so hard on yourself when you slip and don't be so hard on yourself when you're faced with a a traumatic situation that just sucks the life out of you and just makes you look at yourself in a different way. You know, this is temporary and we all have the knowledge within us. We all have the strength within us, the perseverance, the willpower, the determination to be better. And sometimes the universe has to really humble you and put you in a horrible situation to see if you actually learned anything. And I'm here to tell you that I am showing the universe all that I've learned. And I hope that you wake up in your struggles, in your pain, in your depths of your darkness, and you show the universe what you learned as well. Because we're all going to get through this. We all have different dark chapters of our lives. We all have, you know, shadow parts of ourselves that haunt us every single day and for the most part, when you're not in a situation that makes you raw and vulnerable and feel low and broken, we're able to just, you know, fight those wars and never look back. But I feel like the truest testament to your strength, to what it is that you've learned comes when you have been rocked, when you are sitting at the bottom of the pit again, when you are tired of fighting, tired of being strong that is when your true strength comes out. So for those of you that are currently sitting in your darkest hours, in your pit, in your shadow self, feeling raw, feeling vulnerable, feeling weak and exhausted and tired of being strong, just know that this isn't a time for you to rip yourself down. This is a time for you to muster up every ounce of courage and bravery that you've ever had held within you. And it's time for you to show yourself in the universe how strong you actually are. Many of us get caught up in these tougher situations in life and we think that we're at our weakest point. And what I know to be true time and time again is that the minute that you feel like you're weak, that is the moment that you're being offered an opportunity to find your truest strength. Even if you're exhausted, even if you want to cry it out, even if you want to have a little bit of a mini pity party for yourself, you go ahead and you do that, but you do not set up camp there. 
it's human to feel bad, to, to be tired of the pain, of the trauma, of the suffering. You know, everybody keeps telling me, oh, don't worry, Mar, you're going to get through this. You're strong. You're the strongest person I know. You've been dealt some shitty hands. You've constantly, you know, overcome that. And, you know, that's really good to hear. But at the same time, I'm tired. I'm tired of being strong. I'm tired of having to prove myself to myself, to the universe. I am tired of fighting these physical health battles. And what I know to be true in my heart is that the universe, the dark force energies, my shadow self, they throw these health situations at me to try and break me. And any time that something comes at you that you know is trying to break you, that should be a key indicator of how strong you actually are. Because strong people, you know, especially light workers out there, we do not get a tax put on us if we are weak. We do not get a tax put on us if we do not have the power to change the world, to help others, to help ourselves. It is only those that truly shine the brightest and have the brightest light to share with others that can inspire and motivate others. It is only those people that have to go through the trials and tribulations of being broken down all the time. And I guess what the universe is trying to tell me is that my light is bright as F because this darkness that is constantly thrown at me, the challenges especially through my health, through this vessel, that's all they have to attack is this vessel at this point, because I've overcome every freaking challenge that they've ever given me. And I'm going to continue to do it, even though I'm tired, even though I want to cry about it, even though I want to curl up in a ball and just, you know, dissolve into the void. I can't do that. So that's why I'm showing up. That's why I'm going to continue to show up. And that's why I thank you for understanding my pain and my struggle and what I'm going through and why I might not be speaking as confident and as clearly as you've probably grown accustomed to me, to hearing me. So, you know, through the drugs, through the pain, through the suffering, we're going to do these ascension symptoms because we have a very important shift in the energy. Again, as you may know, we are in Pisces season, my friends. We are trying to wrap up old systems, old cycles. We are purging. We are releasing emotionally, mentally pain and trauma that is just stuck in our physical bodies. And all of this is in preparation for airy season to begin, where a brand new energy inspires us to look forward instead of looking at the past. So we are going through it. We are all going through different levels of it. But pain is not something that we need to compare because pain is pain and suffering is suffering. Darkness is darkness. And in the same token, light is light. Love is love. Power is power. And we don't recognize our light, our power, our love. If it wasn't for the dark and the pain and the hate and the yuckiness that gets thrown at us, it truly does make us stronger, make us better. So with the ascension symptoms that we can kind of look forward to for the week, I say look forward to as a heads up because they're probably not going to be pleasant. However, we are on this side of the new moon in Pisces, which means that the darkest part should be over. We're now halfway through Pisces season. We should be kind of gaining the balance we should be leaning towards the more positive qualities and characteristics of what Pisces season offers us, which is magic, which is intuition, which is healing and transformation. It's creativity. It's power. It's enlightenment. It truly is a very, very out of body, out of this world experience at the later part of Piscean energy. It's when our spirit becomes stronger than our physical bodies. And all of this, again, is preparing us for a clean slate, for a brand new beginning, for a rebirthing that takes place 
with the new astrological calendar with the equinox when we move into Aries season again mid-March. So I do kind of suspect, though, that the heaviness, the fogginess, you know, many of us feel like we're drugged. I know I'm speaking from a different level of drugness right now, but even if I wasn't on these drugs, you would feel drugged. You would feel very spacey, very dissociative. That's meant to happen. Pisces season is meant to get us out of our physical bodies and kind of put us in an awkward situation where we kind of have to just flow through life, float through the transition of the ups and downs. And Pisces season being a water sign goes through all the different, you know, the different forms that water can take. So there can be really wavy and choppy and damaging seas. There can be calm seas. We can be so exasperated and frustrated that we just, you know, emotionally are depleted. We can be rigid and cold and disassociative from our realities, turning us into an ice cube. You know, there's all kinds of different forms that water can take. It is the most transformative um, element in in the zodiac chart, in the elemental energy chart. Water is here to cleanse us. Water is here to transform us. And water is here to show us how many different forms we can actually take through the transformative process that we got to go through. So I do suspect that things are still going to be highly emotional I do suspect that old memories, old trauma will be triggered again for those releasing periods. And, oh, Lord, I hope it is not in the same way as I experienced in that dentist chair this week. But, you know, the shaking and the tremors, the anxiety, like everything that is uncomfortable in our physical bodies is meant to show us where the where the trauma is stored in our bodies and where it is that we have to release that. And, you know, many of the past experiences, the painful experiences, they're coming up in our dream state. You know, we talked about how Pisces season being very dreamy is also connecting us to the higher realms of night terrors, of, of just nightmares and having people from our past just poke their freaking heads into our dreams and just disrupting our emotional fields when we wake up the next day. It's it's hard, but that's how our unconscious selves need to process some of the past situations in our lives in order to release that energy and free up the space for new energy, for new emotions, for new memories to be stored in our unconscious selves. You know, I often try to give the analogy that we are, we're computer systems, right? And our unconscious memories or motherboards, if you will, we need to be defragged every now and then we have to sit down and go through the files and delete old programs and, you know, install new ones and look for the updates. And this Piscean season is all about kind of defragging our our memory sticks, if you will. We have to clear up enough storage space for the new experiences to have a place to be stored in. And of course, the new experiences are coming in hot and heavy, fast and furious when airy season begins. So we've been feeling a lot of grogginess, a lot of head pressure. Now, not that I want to talk about the dental issues anymore, but a couple of weeks ago, that's when the dental issues got activated. And a lot of the reason why many of us are experiencing, you know, the headaches and the teeth pain and the jaw pain and is because there's a lot of congestion in our headspace. And that congestion builds up to a releasing point. And that releasing point does come in airy season. So it is likely that we are going to continue to struggle with the congestion in our bodies, with the pressure in our heads, with the grogginess and the fogginess that we feel in our mental plane. It's hard to wake up. It feels like we're in a coma. It's hard to move our bodies. It feels like we're running underwater. And it likely will continue uh, throughout the whole Piscean season. We have a lot of puffiness, a lot of swelling that is due to the water retention taking place in our bodies. 
we're in a water season. So it is only natural that we experience a little bit of water weight. And because we are experiencing a lot of that water retention, a lot of the water issues, the sea legs are going to continue. Many of us are having, you know, problems in our knees, in our feet, especially having cold feet. I don't know if you've paid attention to the temperature changes in your body, but we're definitely running on the cold side of things. Again, an analogy, if you were out in the middle of the ocean and you've been treading water, trying to keep your head above water and trying to keep yourself from drowning, that cold water is going to have an effect on your physical body. Pisces energy especially rules over the feet. And for good reason, we know that we're on the precipice, on the brink of making some dramatic changes in our life. And with that comes a lot of hesitation, comes a lot of fear. So many of us have temperature changes in our cold feet because we have cold feet emotionally and mentally from actually moving forward. Fear is trapped in the knee and any kind of discomfort from the knee down in your ankles, in your calves, in your feet and cracking your toes, all those types of situations are very Piscean related. So we do have to expect that to continue. Now, there's going to be even more um, temperature change and temperature fluctuations this week, mostly because we have a lot of heart activations going on because Venus, like I said, she is awake now. She is free and clear from her shadow period. She and Mars, Mars, of course, is going to create a lot of uh, warmer temperatures floating through our body. He's going to create some blood pressure changes. He's likely going to put us in situations where we feel what it feels like for our blood to boil. Why? Because we're frustrated. Why? Because things aren't moving as fast as we would like. Now, Mars and Venus being kind of together, holding hands since uh, the full moon in Leo, Mars has been leading the way because Venus hasn't been up to her fullest self. And when they enter into Aquarian energy, they conjunct, they sit together. But let me tell you, over the next, I'm going to say, week-ish, Venus is going to start pulling away from Mars. Mars goes a little bit slower in his orbit than Venus does. She, she's got a little bit of a pick-me-up. Takes Mars two years to go through all the signs of the zodiac, where it only takes Venus approximately 13 to 15 months, depending on her retrograde cycle. So we've let the masculine energy lead the way since the full moon in Leo on February 16th. They're coming into Aquarian energy. They're going to shake us up globally. They're going to shake us up independently. We are going to feel the shift because Venus, when she moves into Aquarius, she wants emotional independence. She wants to be free. She wants to kind of detach from the relationships that she's been struggling to maintain her power and authority in. And she just needs a little bit of space. She has new ideas for the future and she can't sort them out being connected and committed to a relationship that is dominating her. That doesn't mean that, you know, all the relationships are going to fall apart, although, you know, they should have fell apart if they're not in your highest and truest alignment um, by now. But you're definitely going to feel the ripple effect move through when Mars and Venus move into Aquarian energy. Now, Mars, when he moves into Aquarius, he's sporadic. There might be a day where we just go, go, go. We're manic. We're making changes. We're seeing the progress in our physical lives. We're, you know, making some headway. And then we might stall out, not see anything happen for three or four days. You know, there's a lot of electricity that comes with the Aquarian energy. And just think of being zapped. And another ascension symptom that I will say is pay attention to the electrical shocks that you're getting in this physical realm. Not only are we being shocked in our mental plane to open up to new perspectives, new ways of doing things, new information pouring in, but we're also being renewed in the electricity that we hold in our physical bodies. And because of this, we will experience a fluctuation in the electrical charges that not only makes our heart beat, but 
in the way that we connect with our surroundings. And we will know that we will know where our energy level is by the electrical shocks that we're getting throughout the day, in the run of our day, interacting with our environment. So Venus and Mars, they are very much providing us with a reset, giving us an empowered perspective in our personal relationships, in the new values that we have, the new desires that we wish to pursue. This is going to reignite a lot of passion, a lot of desire because we're awakening to what it is that we need to do in our lives to actually bring our dream, our vision that we've been working on in our inner realms to our physical lives. But with that comes a lot of aggression and a lot of anger and a lot of frustration because like I said, Mars, he's not moving as fast as he wants to. He's been stalled out in Capricorn having to make long-term calculated decisions and not being able to move big steps at all. It's been creeping, just baby steps. And that has been frustrating the hell out of him. So then now he gets into this Aquarian energy. And if he's given a green light go ahead to actually make a move and take a, a huge leap forward, he's going to do that. And it's going to feel very disorienting for us in our lives. Because like I said, one day we could have a lot of energy and see a lot of opportunities open up and make a lot of progress. And then nothing happens for three or four days. So it is going to be a huge ebb and flow. And especially where we're still in Pisces season, we're in an ebb and flow state anyways. So it is going to be a little bit more aggressive with the extremes in which we experience. Now, our nervous system, talking about electricity, um, our nervous system is undergoing a renovation, so to speak. I want to talk about the Schumann resonance for just a minute. Um, it really takes a lot for the Schumann resonance to pop off and hit new heights and hit new um, vibrational frequencies and actually have an activation be, per be portrayed on that chart. And the reason being is because we've been through a very intense, very extensive uh, boot camp energetically, so to speak. And we have globally and collectively and individually reached a level where we're now vibrating at such a high frequency, especially compared to this time last year and, you know, ever before, where we're almost used to this, you know, so it really does take like a lot of solar flares or a lot of electromagnetic frequencies coming in or cosmic radiation. It does take a lot for the Schumann resonance to react these days, but our nervous system is going to be highly affected because of Venus and Mars moving into Aquarian energy. And we have to consider the fact that Mercury up until the ninth is still in Aquarian energy as well. That's a lot of electricity coming into our central nervous systems. Now, we have to be a little bit more open with how it is that we label and identify the emotions that we got going on. Many of us Stay in a very shallow end of just, you know, happy, sad, mad, anxiety, right? We just stick to that. But there's like, there's, there's like a hundred different labels that you can put on the varying emotions in which we feel. And let me just open your mind to something. I want you to be very careful with how you label anxiety because anxiety is merely unfocused energy. Sometimes we're excited. Sometimes we have anticipation. And sometimes because we don't have those particular emotions a whole lot, we just chunk that up to feeling anxious, feeling anxiety. I want you to be a little bit more flexible with how it is that you identify with the emotions coming up because many of us are just going to feel nervous and anxious and just label that as anxiety when really there's a whole spectrum of excitement building up. And there should be excitement building up. We're wrapping up what has been a very, very, very transformative year. And we are about to embark on a brand new adventure in a brand new life lesson with brand new experiences coming at us. And yes, that can be anxious, that can create anxiety and restlessness, but it's also super exciting. We don't know what awaits us in the future. And let me just reframe this for you. How many of you are very happy, 100% content with the way that your life is right now? I'm not a betting girl, but I would say 
There's not too many of us out there that is 100% wanting to lock in all elements of our lives right now. We want change, but yet we fear change. So we have to rewrite the narrative on how it is that we actually invite change into our life. Are we going to be anxious and fearful about the changes that are coming? Or are we going to be excited about the changes that are coming? That is up to you. That is how you want to label and rewrite your inner narrative. But I do welcome you and open you up to kind of sticking on the positive side of how you can um, redirect and redefine the energy that takes over as we move through this week. So we're still going to be hella floaty. We're definitely going to be dizzy. We're going to have a lot of information come in, especially when Mercury moves into Pisces on the 9th. Now, let me again, just reiterate that this is not Mercury's finest hour. Um, we're definitely retreating in our mental plane. Yes, there's a lot of positive. Our intuition is getting stronger. Our ability to dream and visualize what it is that we want for ourselves gets stronger. But the fog gets thicker. We're a little bit more gullible. We're a little bit more, um, I want to say innocent, but at the same time, uh, we just fall for too much. And with the propaganda going on in the real world right now, it's been hard to discern the truth from the lies anyways, but we're even more gullible with Mercury in Pisces energy. So I want you to be very, very understanding to not take new information at face value. I don't want you to react to it. I want you to understand that there's a lot of lies and delusions going to come at us with Mercury in Pisces. We're very unfocused. We're unable to focus on the details, which could put us in a, some messy situations of making decisions. It's best, honestly not the right time to be making a whole lot of serious commitments. Um, but we lack boundaries and we lack boundaries in our mind. We lack boundaries in being able to discern, like, is this actually how I feel or is this just like a negative narrative or is this just like, you know, twisted thoughts coming in? We're very confused and it's hard to understand within ourselves what it is that we feel, what it is that we actually think. Our logic and practicality gets kind of washed over. We're very vague. We're very wish-washy. We can't even understand ourselves. How do we expect anybody else to understand us? What I will say is, like I said, this is a time for uh, the creative aspect of us to really flourish. Writers and musicians and artists, like this is peak energy, for creative endeavors, for new inspirations, for new creative ideas to really be downloaded in our mental plane. But again, we're very unfocused. We're very confused about the information coming in, even from the higher realms, even from our intuition, and especially from the real world. So we have to be very, very focused on the fact that we're unfocused. We have to be very open minded to the fact that we can be very close minded. We have to be very stable in understanding that we're going to be unstable. We're very confused. We're very wish washy. Nothing is as it appears. Nothing is as it seems. So that is definitely going to put a little bit more of a confusing layer on top of what already is a very confusing time for many of us. Now, we can expect for our healing abilities, our psychic abilities, our um, spiritual selves to become a little bit more aggressive. This is a prime time to be diving into your spiritual practice. Your guides, your higher self can communicate with you a lot more easily the veil is technically non-existent at this point. And we can definitely level up in our healing journey. Uh, Piscean energy is meant to heal us. But again, like I had mentioned last week, many of us think of the healing journey as this light and fluffy rainbow and butterfly filled time when we have to understand that healing is dirty. 
Healing is heavy. Healing is hurtful. Healing is painful. Um, but again, we're on this side of the Piscean energy, the Piscean life lesson. So I'm really hoping that many of us can step into the lighter parts of this Piscean energy and identify within us what needs to be healed, identify the spiritual practice that we need in order to stay strong and stable, to discern, you know, the truth from the lies, our intuition from our, our practical and logical mindset, you know, our higher selves from our ego selves. This is a time of realization where boundaries are needed because Piscean energy does not allow for boundaries. That's why everything bleeds into one another. That's why the day and the time seems to bleed into one another. And we have to work that much harder to compartmentalize our thoughts, our feelings, our boundaries, our actions to just recognize that we can't just, you know, there is an element of going with the flow, but there's also an element of making sure that you don't get swept up in the in the rift currents in the ocean and get taken to the other side of the world. You know, you do have to swim. You can't just let the ocean take you to where it wants to go. You, but you can kind of get in alignment with what currents are going to help you get to your destination faster. So that's kind of what we're looking to do at this particular point in the calendar. We have to discern our positive and negative narratives. We have a lot of inner values, a lot of our inner beliefs that are changing very rapidly, not only due to external circumstances, but internal circumstances that are constantly changing with new information coming in, new realizations taking place, emotion shifting. This is constantly pushing us to repaint what our futuristic vision is going to look like there's a lot of re-editing going on revision going on you know we typically hear those words when planets are in a retrograde and for the first time in a long time all planets are direct all planets are go all planets are supporting us and moving forward but the piscean energy specifically needs us to get our shit together in our heart space in our head space in our spirit in our karma it's an inside job right now so that when we get the green light go ahead from the universe, we're not wasting any time, energy or efforts effing around. We're going to know exactly what it is that needs to be done. And we're going to know exactly when it is that it needs to be done in a strategic and calculated manner. So the head and heart wars are going to continue especially as we approach the first quarter moon in Gemini. Again, that is a division, a division of self, the heart against the head, the ego against the spirit, the individual versus the group. Gemini energy is the ruler of the mental plane. Mercury rules over Gemini. There's a lot of information, a lot of details. We are constantly just being distracted. We are constantly being consumed with new perspectives new questions, new answers, new information. But our job, our job is to sort through this information overload and to find common ground. That common ground, if you put your heart on your head, or sorry, if you put your hand on your heart and the other hand on your head and you move them closer together and you do a two-step shuffle and they get closer together, what do you find? They meet at the mouth. They meet at the throat chakra. They meet at speaking a new truth. They meet at asking the right questions and answering those questions from an intelligent, practical, logical mind space, which is the mental plane, and an intuitive, emotional heart space, which, of course, is the heart. So we do have a little bit of division happening, some polarization happening in order for us to find a new common ground. We are going to have a little bit of an, a situation where old injuries are being reopened for reprocessing, for releasing. Now, this is going to happen on a physical level, but it's happening on an emotional level as well. It's also happening on a psychic level, which means that fragments from old incarnations are coming back. This means that if you broke your leg when you were six years old, you might have leg cramping, growing pains, remnants 
of that old injury coming up for re-acknowledgement. Emotionally, we're talking about trauma. We're talking about old memories, old past relationship drama coming up, either being activated in the run of your day with the obstacles in which you're currently facing or popping up in a dream state. Again, our dream state is necessary for our unconscious selves to process the topics and the themes, the pain and the trauma that we in our waking lives would run a mile in a day from. It's time for these things to come up. Again, we're in Pisces season. This is about bringing things up from the past, bringing things up from our pain, from our trauma that we've suppressed and repressed so far down within us that it doesn't even exist. Bringing it back up because we're defragging the system. We need that space in our memory stick for the new experiences to be downloaded in, which means that we have to revisit going through the old files of our experiences and deleting what is no longer serving us, what is no longer contributing to our learning experience, to our healing experience. Did you ever go through your phone when you hit your maximum memory and you have to go ahead and delete some pictures? You start going through it and suddenly you reach an area of your life that you wish you didn't even experience, let alone that you don't want to relive. And then all of a sudden you get so overwhelmed with not even wanting to relive those experiences through pictures that you just shut it down and you don't delete any pictures at all until you get that flash, that warning on your phone that you can't take another picture. This is where we're at. And this is where we are at. So we're going to have to dive in to those old memories, to those old thoughts, to those old injuries, and we're going to have to really face them. We're going to have to remember them. We're going to have to reevaluate them from a different perspective, a different set of eyes. Our life lessons create a spiral technique. We don't just move on from something. We provide closure to it from the level of understanding and healing that we're currently at. And then it will creep back up in a year or two or whatever the case may be. After you've gained a little bit more wisdom, gained a little bit more experience, and then we see past painful situations from a totally different set of eyes, a totally different perspective, a totally different understanding. And when the lesson is truly learned, that's when we get to press the delete button. That's when the space gets cleared up on the memory stick. That's when we can move forward into a new experience that will then take over that old experience's space. So guys, I'm exhausted. I will say that. I want to thank you so much for sitting through this. I'm sure um, it was not what you were used to hearing from me. I am sure that it I'm not even going to edit this, I'm not even going to listen to it because I'll probably end up deleting it because I just I hate appearing like this. I hate being low energy. I hate sounding like I'm drugged. I hate sounding like I don't know what I'm talking about. Um, but hopefully, we covered some stuff that resonated. We covered, you know, some stuff that gave us some good understanding about what it is that we're going through. I want to thank you for being with me, for the love, for the support. I want to thank you for being kind to one another here in the chat, in the comments. We've had some not so awakened people uh, leave a list of really negative things in the comments over this past week, especially riding off of last week's little conversation about, you know, the things going on in the world. And y'all have really met those very low vibrational, angry, frustrated, ego, egotistical people. Y'all met them with nothing but love and light. I want to thank you so much for that. I want to thank you so much for backing me up, for standing in alignment of love and freedom and unity. I want to thank you so much for the love and support that you continuously give me on a daily basis. And I apologize so greatly uh, for my energy level, for the audio for everything that's going on with this little situation in my mouth. But like I said, I got to show up. I want to be the example of the change that we all want to see in the world. I want to be the example and hopefully a semi inspiration for you going through your own pain, your own suffering, your own darkness. So I just I want to send you nothing but love. So once again, Thank you, not only showing up for me, but thank you for showing up for yourself. 
I'm sending you nothing but love. We'll talk to you soon.